Um, we're ready to get started. And we're going to start off with, uh, because we're a college here, we're going to start off with our educational song. And then we'll have Alexi Ed do our opening prayer. And I'll do official greeting, and then we'll move on to Lexi's presentation. Um, but uh, before we get started, I just wanted to ask all of you who are uh, in here, if you could please uh, take a table.
Beautiful, uh, beautiful song. I want to thank Creekside for doing the opening um, and also, like she had, for doing our prayer. This morning, I just want to say, Wopila, for all of you for being here today. Um, you know, uh, as Lakota people, every day we give Wopilas, every day we give thanks when we wake up. Um, when we get up and we pray with the sun, whenever we put food out, uh, whenever we gather, we always start with a prayer. And whenever we go to sleep, we always start with that. We smudge, we smudge our own homes. We take care of, our, take care of ourselves that way. Because as individuals living in our families and our communities, we have a responsibility to yourself and your family to take care of them. And as uh, working with Oglala Lakota College and being part of Oglala Lakota College, we have a responsibility to one another. Uh, we are still here, sitting here amongst us. Many of us are grandmas, grandpas, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters. And so in many ways, we still carry that role amongst us, and we bring it to our workplace and interact with one another. And last year, when we started, uh, when we started working um, here uh, with the first all staff, we mentioned that we were going to uh, start to try to not to say that it wasn't improved, but improve our culture and climate, not our Lakota culture, because that's the backbone of who we are as a tribal college. We're a tribal college and our Lakota culture, our Lakota way of life, our philosophy is everything in, every, in everything we do and as, as within ourselves and how we interact with our students. But the culture and climate of trying to improve relations and building relations, because when we improve relations and we act and actually demonstrate and try and strive through uh, trying to obtain and live through our day-to-day -day Lakota values, then it just makes us stronger as an individual and stronger as people. And of course, knowing that we're human beings and we make mistakes. Uh, but we also have that ability to correct those mistakes. You know, if we offended somebody or if we may have said something differently or we may have acted in a different way, we have that ability and the time to correct those mistakes and work well with one another. And I think this year, this is what we're, our, our, little commit, our little group is really going to focus on, is trying to build those relations and provide more awareness. You know, and everyone, when we get awareness, uh, it applies to people at different points and different times in their life. And so as we go through this series, we plan on addressing, at least talking about and bringing some of our revered elders to give us some teachings because, they, uh, because they are valued, they lived here, uh, they experienced uh, more things in life, and they can help continue to guide us to take us into the future. So I'm really uh, grateful and honored to uh, uh, introduce Lekshi Ed Starr. He's a faculty member here, and he's also one of our elders. So um, I want to ask you to give him a warm welcome, and um, uh, we're grateful to hear his wisdom.
Good morning. I'm pointing at you because you can watch me on top of I'm going to I'm going to talk about what a whole lot of respect. And uh, there was a story that I heard. Uh, there was these Tokalas, the Akechitas, were, uh, were going to have a meeting to plan for a hunt, go on a hunt. And uh, one of them uh, Tokalas had a red willow dogwood about four feet long. And he took that uh, and drew a circle in the ground, and everybody got in there, and they sat down, and they started to meet. Before before that happened, they, uh, two two or three Kukalas went up to the hills to look for rabbits or some food, pig berries or something. And on the way back, uh, they were coming down the hill, and or the where these Kokalas were sitting in a circle. And they saw a real shining glow around that, a round glow around that where they were sitting. So as they were coming closer, it started to fade. When they got to the other other Tokalas, he said, Ata Ijanja Nakapelo. Guys were all in the in a in a uh, bright light, you know, surrounding you guys, and uh, I think that's what they that was a old ancient uh, way to have a meeting was to take a willow and so that it keeps out the bad bad things away from the meeting. <clears throat> but wo'ohola elpekile means uh, to have a show respect. I learned how to do this. I'm a first. I'm going to read some uh, quotes from a uh, medicine man. Uh, this is Frank Fools Crow. He said, "Respect is how to treat everyone, not just those you want to impress." Um, well, every, every, let every step you take upon the earth be as a prayer. This is black outcome, not perfect, but it will always be real. This is Luther standing bare. The old people came literally to love the soil. And they sat or reclined on the ground with the feeling of being close to a mothering power. The soil was soothing, strengthening, cleansing, and healing. The earth was uh, one of the first uh, creations. And so it was, and even t today, it is a spirit. And so when the Lakotas meet, they sit on the ground. In, in harmony with the earth. This is black elk. Let the, like the grass showing tender faces to each other, thus should we do, for this was the wish of the grandfathers of the world. It may be that some little root of sac the sacred tree still lives, Nourish it then, that it may eat leaf and balloon, and be and fill with singing burden. This is black elk. Perhaps you have noticed, even in the slightest breeze, you can hear the voice of the cottonwood tree. This we understand as its prayer to the great spirit for not only men but all things and all beings pray to him continually in different ways. 
late Frank Fulcro. We keep everything in balance. We are in harmony with ourselves and are at peace. Frank again, those who live for one another learn that love is the bond of perfect unity. We uh, to have respect, you have to have the Teospai uh, mentality. Uh, the Creator, uh, when when He cre started creating things, uh, we understood that there is good and bad in the Creator, because He could take life and give life, and He could also build, and He could destroy. And we, as humans, uh, whatever the, he does, it affects us. So, so all of us here have good and bad in us. But there's a third concept that the Creator gave us, and that was to get the good and the bad, to maintain a balance. Our ancestors, our elderly, used to say that and this is what they meant because to maintain a balance between good and bad is the hardest thing to do. And to walk in balance, like Fu's crow said, it, it, it was, that came from the Creator. So if you only think in good and bad, if you look at everything, and you judge it either good or bad. That's a dual thinking. So we need to incorporate the third concept of a maintaining a balance. The creator is both good and bad. It can give life and take life, can build and destroy. All humans inherit, inherit what the creator does. There is good and bad in all of us. When we grow up, you know what's right and you know what's wrong. Lakota pike o tehike, it is very hard to be Lakota. We still say that today. It's not that we're in poverty and we're, there's no food and all that, but it's to keep uh, maintain those balance of good and bad. Because we can't always be good and we can't always be bad. Somewhere you have to balance them to live a ancestors balance both to live a good life. There are good and bad in all humans. The, the concept like like attracts like. If you're a healthy person, you attract healthy situations. If you're unhealthy, you attract unhealthy situations. If you are a racist, that's what you will experience in your life. Because you're attracting, you are calling, and all you do is complain. So what you attract, uh, you don't have healthy. You won't. You don't have healthy relationship. <clears throat> you must live the healthy way. It doesn't include a ceremony or a prayer. Natives were not perfect, which was why we had medicine men. If we were healthy, we would not have medicine men. However you address a person, it poses a difficulty. It is your responsibility to learn from this. 
Humility is a virtue that is not only a Lakota way, it is for everyone. Part of that process is to have compassion and respect for others. If you disagree, as long as you don't force your ideas on someone's throat, as long as you say you're wrong and dumb, that's not the Lakota way. In the beginning of time, uh, the Creator created Unchimaka, the earth, and uh, the land or the earth was all half water and half land, one big land base. And uh, on that land, no matter what race, color, creed, what language you spoke, we were all one. We lived a pte oyate way. But, but some, uh, some of them decided after million years, they got greedy. They wanted more than, than what others had. They wanted more from the other, what they had. And so they started to, uh, the, the, uh, taking things, before that time, anything the earth provided us, we always give something back in return. <clears throat> but uh, today, these greedy, those greedy in, in that past world, they didn't do that. They just took and took. They dug the earth up, they scarred the earth up, they, dug up uranium, they, they contaminated the water, they contaminated the air, they cut down too many trees, they reduced the animal population. And that's just the well, same thing that's happening today. <clears throat> so we need to have respect for each other because uh, in that, back in that time, they built uh, these greedy people. They created a technology that was more advanced than what we have today. <clears throat> and that uh, when uh, when it was time, uh, or the earth, Uchimoka, she didn't like it because she was all scarred up. And she decided to uh, cleanse herself. And so uh, those that live still live the Pate Oyate way were told uh, the, in a dream or a message from somewhere, maybe from a tree, that there, when it's time, and she, that when she uh, when she cleanses herself to go underground. And one day, she, that message came to a lot of people that still maintained the, the way. And uh, <clears throat> they all went underground. Then a cleansing took place, started to take place. Like today, we have these storms that are coming. They're getting stronger every year. And, and just like that, where those that still maintain these stay away are going to receive that message. And just like before, uh, after the cleansing, we came out from one cave and started a new world. And then uh, we, so when we get that message, uh, we need to tell all our kakosas today that we are in a time of a, Preparation. When you get that message, go run to the uh, when cave, go down there. We have uh, relatives down there. Some of us came out, but the rest stayed down there. When you, if you ever been to when cave, when you go down there, there's a chamber down there. When all the lights are turned off, you see the little blue lights. Those are our relatives. They will take care of you during the next cleansing. 
And this uh, cleansing happened uh, three t or two times before. So we are now in the third cleansing. So we, we need to make that preparation. And I don't know how long that's going to be, but uh, we, need, we need to tell our Takoza, we need to tell our people, we need to tell the world that this cleansing is coming. When they, they had the ghost dances, my Kaka, no order. He was a leader of a, the ghost dance. That was way before a, well, Voka came here with, bring, uh, with the ghost den. At that time, when the, during the dances, right, right below Kuni table, that was where the most of the, sun, not sun dance, but uh, the ghost dances, Anakiwati, took place. And uh, when the, during the dance, some of them fell. Some of them saw vision, and they saw this new world where there was only buffalo and the Pteoyate, which are the people that we keep kept the way. And uh, the, at that time, the military, United States military, thought they were preparing for an uprising, and so they started to massacre. First, they went to Slim Buttes. It's on the west end of uh, the reservation. Then they went to Stronghold up in a battleland, where they, where the people fled the ghost dancer. They massacred those them too. And then in 1890, then it happened in Wounded Knee. And uh, so that's what they saw this uh, after the cleansing. What they saw was the picture after the cleansing. Uh, so we need to see, believe or think about that we are in an era of preparation right now. <clears throat> I have a couple of pages to go. In this way, you will have no compassion in your heart. You have no respect of others. I forgot the liquor. Up here. <laughs> okay, that's it. Where we're at. In this way, you have no compassion in your heart. You have no respect of others. Some people confuse respect and humor. Honor is earned. Respect is given. In the old way, we are taught to re respect our enemies because they breathe the same air we do. Same sun warms their heart and soul. We eat the same food. We drink the same water. And we both believe red. We both have the right to believe whatever we want, as long as we don't oppress one another. When someone talks about you, you still show respect. This is the Lakota way. Don't be a lila pawehe, pawehwake. Don't be different. This is a, a picture of a Tokala. There was a story about Tokala. There was a, they, were, they were coming back from a hunt, 
the, the burden, the load of the meat was slowing them down to try to get back to the village camp. And the, and the whole horde of uh, uh, crows, Apsaloka people, they, and, and, uh, they came and they started to fight them. And they were given these about 10 hokalas of bad time. And uh, one of them uh, was a Kit Fox Society. That's what hokala mean. He, stuck, he took out his spear like that, stuck it in the ground, and then uh, he had a leather string thong, tied it on there and tied it around his waist like that. And then he fought, he himself fought off, started to fight off all these uh, crows. And uh, <clears throat> that, gave him a, that gave the rest of the, his band a chance to run, escape. And uh, after they were all gone, uh, he must, this one person, he must have killed at least 20, 25 of the crows by himself. And finally, uh, they killed him. They surrounded him and killed him. And, and, uh, and several days after the fight, uh, all the Tukala that took whatever uh, meat and food they got to the camp, there was these, uh, there was a bunch of these crows were coming down the hill. They were walking their horses. And uh, when they came close to the, when they came close to the camp, uh, they went out, some of them went out to meet them. Some of the Etats and Natsad went for, went to meet them, see what they wanted. And here they, bought, they brought a, a bunch of horses, and they brought a lot of gifts. They brought a lot of food. And that was in respect for that uh, one Tokala that they surrounded and killed. And that was uh, respect that uh, Tokalas carry all the time. Uh, we don't kill our enemies. If you're going to fight somebody, you have a, these staffs with the rounded tip, and you touch the enemy, and then you turn around and walk away. And the enemy had a respect for that too. Uh, they don't kill anybody that's uh, with his back turned towards you. That was a story about the Hokalas and about the Wo'ohola. And uh, that was, that was count, called the counting coop. Anyway, I uh, want to thank you for listening uh, to what I had to, what I. My presentation, <laughs> Pilamaya Pilo. Um, I really appreciate the lessons and the guidance and the stories to help us see how it could be utilized. So, um, Actually, Lila Wopila Tunkai Chichia. Some of the things that, when we think about of uh, the respect that stood out for me while he was uh, talking, was that we're not perfect and that we have to seek balance within one another, and that is part of who we are. And depending on our philosophy and our own understanding, that that balance for individuals, our individuals, ourselves, has a lot to do with how we see the world and how we're going to react and interact with one another. 
but at the same time, really appreciating one another for who they are and how they are and accepting who they are. Not just tolerating who they are, but understanding that they themselves have their own life experience, their own philosophy, their own understanding of who they are and where they come from and their family. So there's a lot, maybe many of you received additional lessons, but I know when I hear stories like that and I hear teachings, I always think it comes to me later on or a certain ex uh, experience, then I'll say, oh, that's what that, it has a deeper meaning. I'll say, that's what that means. Oh, no, that's what it means. So it's continually uh, increasing my knowledge and my application of those skills. And so when we uh, look at one another and we're working in meetings and it gets really, you know, uh, we have some debates, you know, respecting each other's decisions and opinions, and then really working hard to try to put all those decisions and opinions together. I think that's something that we want to strive for here at the college. But we also want to pay attention to the verbal, but also the nonverbal cues. So the verbal, some of the nonverbal cues, you know, what are some cultural nonverbal cues? 